Janine, Jennifer Edwards, psychic medium. Hello, how are you going, Janine? Really nice well. And nice and hot. I'm <laughs> really hot today here in Queensland. It's really humid, oh, and it's really I'll just hot it out today. It's really hot here too, down south today. Not humid though, thank God. <laughs> so so uh, mm, I thought I would throw this topic out because I've been thinking about this a lot lately. The topic is the right timing in relationships. Now, we get a lot of clients who, who want to be in relationships. So they're single and they want to be in a relationship and yep. they're very frustrated because they're not in one and they want to know when is it going to happen. And this, this is, you know, almost every second client yep. comes to us for that reason. And, and we're in that very tricky situation where we have to breach the news to them that it's most probably not the right timing. It's very rare that I would get um, a client and look at it and say, this is the right timing. So oh, go for it. Okay. It's rare, don't you think? Um, I think... Yeah, I think it is. Um, I'm not, I don't predict that much about relationships coming in the future unless spirit give it to me within the context of, as you know, of, of an issue or a problem. But um, mostly it's, I find it really hard to, to pick it. And I don't know whether because I'm out so influenced by them wanting it so badly. Mm. So I know that I do... Um, if spirit tell me, I'll, I'll, I'll tell them to go to you because you can use astrology for timing. And, and I find that so handy because, you know, I can say, oh, in the next five years, but they might want something a bit more, more specific, which I can't give. And I don't like to give because I could be wrong or, you know, I, I could be, you know, people give up. If you give, when you're doing psychic work, if you if you get it wrong, they give up. But I could be a year out, or I could be, you know, whatever. So, but with astrology, you can fine tune it, can't you? Mm, that's right. That's why it's good to have a reading with a psychic medium and an astrologer. Yes. Because what I do think you get right, Jennifer, is character. Yeah. You're very, very good at character. Mm. Yeah. And even though I know you don't like predicting anything about relationships, I have to say that, that when you are called to do so, and let's say your spirit guides tell you something, when you do, you are crystal clear and you come out with it and it turns out to be right. Yeah. So I think that even if four times out of five you don't have anything to say on that 20% occasion, you yeah. are right. Yeah. So I guess the, th the point there is that we can't always come up with anything definite, but when we do, it's definite. It's definite. So have you got any stories that you can share with us? Well, I was thinking about how I had a woman come and see me three years ago. And yes, she said, when am I going to have a relationship? And I couldn't see anything. Oh. And I said, yeah, and I hate that. I said, look, I really can't see anything and I have to be really honest with you. So it must be a fair way away, if at all. And, of course, you are the bringer of doom. So the black cloud comes over the yeah, reading yeah, yeah. and people are very, um, very disheartened and that's not what they paid for. No. So you're not really giving someone great news, so it's not a bargain. Um, so as a reader, you've got to tough that discomfort out because in that moment you want to rescue them, don't you? You want to just take them and nurse them and say, it's going to be okay, yes, you're going to find someone, don't worry about it. So there's that temptation to soothe their discomfort. Yes. And I think for a lesser reader, you could be seduced by that. Yeah. And I suspect many readers are seduced by, by wanting to placate the client and go, oh, well, you know, I can see someone next year, blah, blah, blah. So it takes an incredible amount of strength in a reading 
to say what the client doesn't want to hear. So that, that was my first story. So she said after I was, I, I maintained the same story, that I couldn't see anything. And then she said, oh, well, the last five readings I've had, they've told me that I was going to find someone this yes. year. Yes. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm not one of those readers. And I said, and if they were right, you wouldn't be having a reading with me. But clearly they're not right. And I have to stick by my guns and I believe I'm right. Anyway, she came back two years later and said, you were right. There was nobody. So I'm trying again. I still saw nobody. Yeah. Oh, tricky. That's awful. It's tricky. Oh. It's tricky. So what can I do? I mean, what can you do? Um, you know, you can't shoot the messenger and they do get quite angry with you and then they get angry at themselves. So it's a very, very delicate situation. Have you had those sort of readings? Yeah, I've um, I've had friends who were told that they were going to meet someone <laughs> and I always knew, especially one of them would never do that. I, I knew it was never going to happen or... So some of the readers may have been right, but the time passed. You know, there was no um, perhaps, um, you know, because we've got to open doors and we've got to be proactive to make it happen as well. It's just not going to land in our laps. No one is going to knock on our front door by accident and that's the man of your life. Aren't you lucky? It doesn't happen like that. You've got to go out. You've got to mix. You've got to let people know you're looking for someone, right? And spirit then can bring the right person into your life, whether it's through work or social or whatever it is, a club. But if people don't do any of that, even if I would think because the person I'm thinking of that we did um, had an opportunity in her chart, I think he did, um, but there was no proactivity in that period to get out and about and make it happen. Either. So what do you think about that? Yeah, well, it's made me think of another client of mine who strongly believed that she was going to be celibate. She was the opposite. I don't want anybody. Um, I want to be on my own, not interested, had a bad divorce, whatever, and had maintained that. And I thought, oh, yeah. And I had watched Pluto coming up to her Venus for a couple of years. And I said, oh, I think things might change. I'd said to her, my prediction is you're going to meet your soulmate. And, and I don't say that very often. Yeah. So Pluto hits Venus once every 250 years. Oh. It ain't common. No. So she's like, no, 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 it won't happen to me. She's very industrious, busy, loved her life. And then one day she got up. She didn't believe in social media. She didn't believe in anything to do with the computer. One day she got up and she went on an online dating app for 24 hours, met a guy, went on a date with him, closed her account. Yes. And she's been with him for the last five years and they got married and moved in Are together. Are you kidding? I know. And that to me is is what a transit does. Yeah. That's so you know, amazing. It, it opens up you know, all of the energy and then she just closed up the book again. So opened herself up to opportunity, took a big risk, met her soulmate, that was it, wrapped it up again, put the book away and got on with her life. I mean, she's a very sober-minded, intelligent, spiritual woman. So I think in her, her case, she got a cue. She yes. got a cue from spirit. Someone. Yeah. Spirit said, there's only one way to find this guy. you got to go online for 24 hours. It went she, against her principles. I was going to say, because you you said she didn't want to meet anyone. No. I wonder, I wonder what, did she wake up and just think, I think I'll experiment? I don't know. She said she just had a, a feeling that she had to do it. So she, and that was, she followed her gut. She followed her gut. Followed her gut completely. Uh, I'd have to say this woman is is 
very tuned in spiritually. So when she got the message, she got the message. Well, that's being proactive, isn't it? Exactly. She swallowed her pride because when she told me that story, I thought that's really out of character. Yeah. You know, and her pride could have stopped her from doing that. Wow, that's an amazing story. And Janine, amazing. you know you're going to upset a lot of people today because they're going to say, well, that didn't happen to me when I had a gut feel. So Now, <laughs> conversely, yeah. I have another client with the same transit, Pluto um, conjuncting her Venus, and she's the same sort of person doesn't believe in anything to do computers online and I saw the same thing and thought mm, I think you might meet your soulmate and she didn't do that oh. she didn't follow her promptings and didn't meet them really so same story different level of proactivity so what did she say to you after that past you were she just said it never happened but, you know, works from home, she's a hermit, you know, doesn't like socialising. So, you know, didn't follow any prompts. So it takes a certain amount of your own, you know, you, 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 you've got to put in halfway, don't you? I, I think so. And, and as I always say to people, you know, you've got to open the door. Open the door and then spirit can make it happen if it's meant to. Right? Yeah. But if you sit at home watching TV, eating chips on the sofa, you know, like, it's not going to happen. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. You have to get out there. And, like, the lady did the app and met him, met him and obviously she thought that's the one and closed it down and he thought that too. And, and it's so fascinating to hear the opposite to that. She probably woke up every day and thought, you know, I'm a bit lonely. I really should join something. She might have even looked online and didn't join. Yeah. That, those two stories just came That's to me. Amazing comparison. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Same transit. Um, interestingly, the second lady is now in a relationship. Oh. But this was like two, three years later. And I've been looking at her chart and her chart doesn't have anything to do with romance and yet it's a very romantic connection. They're only dating. It's been three months, four months or something. Okay. But what I notice is the right person can come to you disguised as a transit. Yes. So if you're having a big Neptune transit, then Mr Neptune's going to walk in. Yes. Right? So it's not always in astrology about romantic transits. It's about people teaching you things. Yes, that's true. And people introducing elements into your life. So to all those astrologers out there, don't just look at romantic configurations. Some things are not about romance. Sometimes a person can come into your life and they're your teacher. Sometimes you get rescued. Sometimes they're authority figures. So they come disguised, you know, as things. So don't always look for love. No. Mm. no that's right. Some people just really need a roof over their head and somebody comes in with a house. And they just need sometimes a friendship. Some people need a facial <laughs> friendship, but that's how it's going to be. And is that a bad thing? Yeah, not a bad thing. And then you've got all the people who... Um, they want a relationship, but they don't have the capacity. You know, like they're critical. Yes. They're unstable. They're womanizers. So it's all very well. Astrology and, and you know, the spirit world can provide someone for you. But if you sabotage it, mm, that doesn't work either. No. So even when life gives you the right person you can just destroy it as well and oh. then come to see a reader and go why am I not in a relationship that's right you can have your chance and I've heard you say that they've had their chance yep yep and um it's just passed them by and sometimes I, you know I always say to people remember when you meet someone and you think this is it 
And then three or four months, maybe 12 months into the relationship, whether you're living with them or not, but your gut feel is not right about this. There's something it, it will tell you, you need to not ignore that gut feel. So anything that you feel is not right, it's not treating me right, it just doesn't feel right, you need to, instead of going, oh, it doesn't matter, it's only a small thing. But those small things can build up into a lot of things. And what I always say to women, you know, I've met so many women, you probably have too, and um, we're talking mainly women today, <laughs> but we've certainly had our fair share of male readings as well. Um, but you can meet who you think your partner is and waste years of your life without a commitment from them, without it being the right one. And yet, you know, it's just extraordinary how many people sort of know that it wasn't the right one. You know? Yeah, definitely. And you can miss your cues too. Mm. You, I mean, you, you've got to be proactive to meet your cues. But I've also noticed with transits, which are all about timing, that you'll miss your transits if you are drunk, if you're under the influence of drugs, illegal or medication or prescribed medication, because you don't have the clarity of mind to hear spirit say to you, go and join that sailing club yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. So then you've got people who have a reading and go, why do I never meet anybody? Well, you were drunk and you weren't getting the messages that were going to lead you to the right person. I, I find that a problem. Yeah, well, um, it reminds me of a client who um, met her partner at, I can't remember it was a, what sort of club, but it was a club that she would never have joined, like a fishing club or something. And she went because her brother or a neighbour said, oh, why don't you come? We'd just have some drinks. It's, there's no one there you'd be interested in. But it, she was a bit depressed, right? And she went and met the love of her life. Wow. And she said, in a club, I would never, ever have stepped inside. But I said yes to this person who wanted to take me mm. instead of saying no. Mm. And so it all worked. No, it's funny. It's funny. Those spontaneous moments where you decide you're going to do that are quite powerful. I yeah. Think. And you have to be teachable by spirit too, you know, and yield to those promptings yes. that, you know, it's unlikely that your partner knocks on the door, although in my case you did, but... Um, it's unlikely. So you do have to sort of meander into the world and not reason through it and just be somewhere spontaneously. So it's really fascinating. It is such a, it's a really hard road to walk. It's a really hard road to walk. And I think the lonelier you get and the more anxious you get about it, um, you do, you sometimes don't pick well. Yeah. So if sometimes I think um, if you can just go, well, it will come, I'll just go with my gut about this person or that, or the person doesn't look the way you want it to look, him or her to look, or, but, you know, you get on really well with them, but they're just good friends. Um, you know, sometimes there's more to it than that. Yeah. And that reminds me, the people who reject the people that have a, appeared, and tick all the boxes that they ask for. If you reject them, very bad. Yeah, it's very you. bad. You don't get a second chance. No. If if you say no to the one that's been wow. offered, and, and that's what you ask for. Yeah, that's right. And opportunities. Uh, but you know, like I, I'm pretty thick. Um, with you know like opportunities as I say to spirit you know you really have to knock me on the head to make me see the opportunities as they come and I'm still a bit that way but other people just get it time and time and time again you know like that girl just thought oh, I'll just go to the fishing club whatever it was and there you go you know yeah. she just didn't want to go but she did and yeah you never know and it also, I've been thinking about with this topic how you and I have done compatibility readings together. 
and I'm in a position where I have to look at the chart. I mean, you you go with your psychic ability and you're fantastic with photos. I've got to say, you can look at someone's partner in a photo, read them like a book. I have to look at a chart. The chart doesn't ever tell me if it's a good or bad person for that person. Oh, okay. It's very, very hard. I, I could take two charts and go and just tell you the strengths and weaknesses. I think there's a magic, though, that has to take place mm -hmm. with two people's charts. I, I don't know if that magic is there or not, but you do. Yeah. So I can read it all and go, oh, yes, he's like this, she's like this. They connect on this level. But there's an extra substance that has to be there. Yeah. And it's grace, isn't it? Yes. It's grace. It's grace. And I can't read grace in a chart. Um, that'd be right. You know, because um, I always maintain there's no one new to us in the world. We've met them many times before. It's just the recycling of the same people in different roles. And um, so there's a lot of karma involved. And karma can be good, bad or indifferent. You know, and as you say, we've got to learn things a lot. Um, it's, it's a really big subject. But um, for timing, which is what we're talking about, I, I still think astrology um, can give you pretty good timing. It can. You know what it is good for is the timing for ending a relationship. And that's what yep. I think people are not good at either. They're not good at ending relationships no. and then they become overcooked. Yes, they can hang on and hang on until they get sick and die. And, that's and how there's no doing. doubt in astrology you can see when a relationship's ending. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, that's handy. And um, handy to know just as handy... It's when they begin. Because sometimes um, astrology can give you a confirmation of what you're feeling. So if you meet someone, you think, oh, I think this is the one. I'm not sure. I'm a bit confused. So astrology can say, yep, this is the great timing. I've looked yep. at both your charts and it's pretty compatible. And this area, you won't be compatible, but you're never going to get 100% perfect. Yeah, at all. At all. Right. Uh, you know, so it's it's such a fascinating, such a fascinating subject. And we were talking earlier about certain people, you know, teenagers meeting the wrong type of men. Um, and you you sort of wonder why that is, you know. Um is that timing? Yeah. Are they supposed to learn something from that? Yeah. Um, it may not be the love of their life. They think it is at the time. But, you know, they can learn a lot through that relationship um, as they go along into new ones. Mostly they yeah. don't. Mostly they yeah, don't. Yeah, true. I think about when I was 17 and I met somebody in Queensland and had a relationship with him and I, I for some mysterious reason, dumped him, even though it was a really good match for me. And here I am in Queensland again, but I always knew uh, I, it's, a lot of things about that felt right, but something inside of me just said sabotage it and run away. And I look back and think, oh, what a strange thing I did because I probably went out with a whole lot of inappropriate guys yeah. and did myself a lot of damage and I could have stayed with that one, but the timing wasn't there. The timing's not there. And no wasn't there. Maybe it was the right guy, but wrong timing. And something inside of me just wanted to go and do something more self-destructive. Well, you wanted to, to explore. Learn. You want to explore your boundaries, right? Mm. And and you couldn't do that with him. Yeah. So and so the 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 um settling down with him, he wasn't the right one this lifetime. So no. he might have been very familiar to you, and I'm sure you've you've had relationships with him in other lifetimes, which have been fine, but maybe they weren't going to stretch you, right? If they're not going to stretch you, maybe maybe that's not the relationship for you because we need to learn on in this planet. This planet's yeah. a school. So most relationships should stretch you, I yeah. think. Yeah. 
it might not, have been just too normal or something too like normal that. Too normal and, and your soul just went, no, nah, I need to stretch and, and you did that, mm. you know, and, right. and you met the right person for you this lifetime and that's the way it is. Yeah, so compatibility is not everything. No. You're going to have the... It's more to it. Embrace. It's more to it. You know, many years ago, <laughs> I, I've read hundreds, hundreds of books over my lifetime. And I remember reading from oh, years ago, some book from the 50s from some medium. And they were talking about how, about what happens before you are born and how you've already organised who you're going to meet and marry and who you're not going to be with and all this sort of stuff. And I remember reading a couple of stories where the soul, um, the two souls that had to meet, which they did, because uh, she was doing a reading for this person. She must have been in trance or something. And um, she said, so before you came, you organised a signal that when you met the right man, he would do this. And I think something was about his hair, he'd play with his hair or something. And then you'd know, or she played with the hair and then he'd know at a soul level that this was the woman uh, mm. for him. And it was so fascinating. And I, I sort of believe that. I do believe that. Um, you 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 organise before you come who you're meant to be with and who who you're not meant to be with and I think that that's very true. Um, but we have free will, so we can always say no. We can always say no, like you did with that guy that you met in the beginning. Who knows? Maybe it was the right one, and you said no, thanks. Mm. I want to yeah. go more. Not not traumatic enough no. for that point in my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, well. Timing. Wrong timing. Wrong timing. And, but I don't think, he, I think you were meant to meet him and that, that's what it is, you know. It's, it's a really complicated and I'm sure when I go to the other side, I can give you a whole lot of real true information. Really complicated. At that time in my life, I was in a medieval society. Oh, okay. And at that particular moment I met him, we were both dressed up in medieval clothes. Ah. And I looked at him and he said hello and I just, I think I just went straight into a past life thing and he did too and that was it. Yep. And, and I, I didn't have the wisdom then to know what was going on, but I'd recognise it now. It was just like we slipped into another dimension. Yeah. And it might have been one of those signals that, that this lady was talking about mm. that dolls had. You will meet him dressed as in a medieval play. Uh, yeah. And you think, oh, you're right. And you do. Well, I remember looking at him. He had tights on. I remember looking at his legs going, I know those legs. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right, so that's soul memory. And so, you know, it's triggered you to go, this is the guy you need to get involved with at that yeah. time. And, yeah. I, and so I do think all that's prearranged. I mm. do think that. I think our free will comes into it. It's choice then from then on. Mm. Here's an opportunity. Do you want to take it or not? Yeah, so complicated. It is complicated. Well, fascinating, Jennifer. And, uh, thank you for that chat. It's always a good subject and not always a happy one. But but we do our best. We do. We do our best. And <laughs> we do. One thing about you and I is we're good at telling the truth. Yeah. So if we true. know the truth, we'll say it. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and you know, know, it's terribly difficult to tell the truth. It, it's really true. It, it's really hard um, because it's not always good news. Mm. But anyway, we do our best, as you say. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you have a good week, Jennifer. Yeah, too. See ya. Bye.